Welcome back guys, I'm Nurse Nick. This is gonna be two of two, which is the videos for the endocrine. Uh, the most, the first video, we went over all the insulin, all the diabetic medications. Uh, now we're gonna do the rest of the endocrine pharmacology medication. So I'm Nurse Nick. Uh, my background is I'm a BLS, uh, PALS, ACLS, Certified Instructor with American Heart Association. I'm also an instructor at the uh, local college and I'm a PR and emergency department nurse where I've spent 10 years of my uh, career. Um, so the first medication we're going to start off with is growth hormone. This is going to be somatropin or genotropin. So somatropin is uh, something medication. It's a growth hormone, right? Uh, growth hormone. What does growth hormone do? It, it makes you grow. So, I mean, that's pretty much the basics of it. Uh, you give this to pediatrics and adults. Um, it is like natural growth hormone. Uh, it stimulates protein synthesis. Uh, the therapeutic treatment, so you got to understand in all these videos is it's what is the medication given for and what do I need to look out for? Well, the big thing is this medication is given to increase growth in pituitary dwarfism where people have dwarfism as a result of their hyposecretion from their pituitary gland, which is where growth hormone comes from, right? So um, this is given to help those people. The goal would be, you know, grow and be bigger. Watch for adverse effects with chronic illness. So sometimes the doses will need to be adjusted according to comorbidities. Uh, adverse effect of this medication is it can cause hyperglycemia and this medication is contraindicated with lithium. All right, so this medication can be given IM sub Q. You wanna rotate your injection sites. Anytime you do sub Q injections, uh, always rotate sites. But the biggest thing that they always talk about with growth hormone is this medication for especially with pediatrics, it needs to be stopped prior to epiphyseal plate closures, epiphyseal closure of your long bones, right? Those are your growth plates. So monitor the growth rate, um, look at your bone age, and then stop this medication growth hormone before those epiphyseal plates close. Uh, look for glucose and don't give it with lithium, all right? So next medication is gonna be our thyroid medication. Thyroid's in our neck. What does our thyroid do? Our thyroid controls meta, uh, metabolism, right? So let's talk about that for a second. It also controls calcium along with your, um, along with your uh, parathyroid. <clears throat> so uh, thyroid secretes T3 and T4, right? So what, what should you know is, okay, um, my thyroid is effect, you know, uh, affects my metabolism. What blood tests do I order to see if I have issues with my, my thyroid gland? That would be a T3 and T4 level. This medication, Synthroid, which is also known as levothyroxine, this medication is what's given uh, as a replacement for that, all right? So if you have hypothyroidism, you don't have enough, it's too low, and you have low energy, you also wanna think what you look like, okay? What or what do patients look like with hypo versus hyper? If your metabolism is really fast, and it's going to be going to be, those people are probably gonna be skinnier in stature, smaller in stature, right? Or if you have hypothyroidism, those people might be a little bit larger, be a little bit chunkier or obese, however you want to call it. Um, Levothyroxine or Synthroid is a medication to replace it if you have hypothyroidism, so it's going to speed you up. So adverse effects of, high, or of Levothyroxine or Synthroid and adverse effect is if the medication works too good. So it looks like hyperthyroidism. So this can include anxiety, everything's going too fast, GI upset, sweating, weight loss, and heat intolerance. And think about this with heat intolerance because you're going to get asked these thyroid questions. So heat intolerance, everything's going too fast. Everything's going to be warmer. Hyperthyroidism are intolerant to heat. Hypothyroidism is intolerant to cold, cold intolerance. Very good. Uh, these medications for your thyroid, uh, they can take up to several, several weeks to work. Monitor that T3, T4 uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, medication, uh, there are rules with this. So now you know what it's for. Every place I've worked at on these different floors in the hospital or you see them in nursing homes, whatever it's gonna be. This medication is always given early in the morning, generally an hour before meals. It's always given on an empty stomach with a full glass of water. That's the rule. What's a full glass of water? It's eight ounces of water, all right? So take this in the morning on an empty stomach once a day this medication is always gonna be in micrograms. It's not gonna be milligrams. This is a medication that's dosed in micrograms. And this is gonna be lifelong treatment, right? We're not gonna fix this for a little while and it's just gonna be better. Um, it's a replacement therapy for people that have issues with uh, secreting T3 and T4. <laughs> so this medication is gonna be given once a day, always given in micrograms, and you wanna avoid foods with iodine. 
And now you're just adding more. Look, it, it'll, get, it'll get easier. <coughs> so foods with iodine, you wanna avoid iodized salt, but also uh, seafood. See, a lot of seafood has iodine in it. And in case you don't remember um, what over-the-counter herbal supplement you can't have with this, uh, you don't wanna have soy. You don't wanna take soy or soy sauce uh, with thyroid problems, all right? So next one, this is anti-thyroid. This is called propylthiouracil. It's also known as PTU, propylthiouracil. So PTU, the last one, the Centaur levothyroxine, that medication was a supplement in T3, T4 if you didn't have enough, right? PTU is when you're hypersecreting, when everything's going too fast. For hyperthyroid, also, hyperthyroidism, also known as Graves disease, right? Start associating names because you're gonna need to do it for the NCLEX. So hyperthyroidism, Graves disease. You give those people propylthiouracil, which is PTU, um, in preparation for maybe even a thyroidectomy. Uh, this medication can cause agranulocytosis, which you wanna recognize agranulocytosis is gonna be decreasing your white blood cells. Okay, well, what blood test should I check with that? You're gonna need to check your CBC. You need to know your range for your blood test. Uh, what, what is the range for your white blood cells? I tell everybody, remember five to 10. I think I've also seen four to 10, it varies everywhere. Five to 10 are some good, easy round numbers. Find some numbers and stick with them. Five to 10,000 white blood cells, all right? Why am I talking about white blood cells? Because propylthiouracil that we're given to treat hyperthyroidism causes agranulocytosis, which means low white blood cells. If you have low white blood cells, you have high risk for infection, right? So what are you gonna monitor for your patient? Infection. What are you gonna ask him? Do you have infection? No. What's the sign of infection? You gotta check for fevers, right? You're gonna ask for things like that. This medication can also cause GI upset. It can cause rashes. Uh, you need to remember the medical term for rash or hives is gonna be urticaria, right? Uh, this medication can cause hepatotoxicity uh, and sometimes toxicity is medication because we're treating hyper, whoop, we're treating hyperthyroidism. We're trying to bring it down. Uh, so this medication can mimic hypothyroidism if it works too good, toxicity. Uh, what's hypothyroidism look at? It look like again, we just talked about it. Lethargy, weight gain, cold intolerance, bradycardia, depression. Again, avoid iodine. This slows down formation of thyroid, thy thyroid hormone. And this medication can take a couple of weeks to actually be effective. Check CBC, check your liver, your AST, your ALT labs, all of that. Very good. So the next medication is gonna be your anti-thyroid medication. This is your radioactive iodine. We keep talking about iodine. Iodine suppresses those um, thyroid cells from secreting T3, T4. We don't want them to secrete because we're treating what? We're treating hyperthyroidism. We need to stop and slow things down. So some, this can be related to thyroid cancer or just hyperthyroidism uh, anyway, or hyperthyroidism by itself, excuse me. Uh, the radioactive iodine actually gets absorbed by the thyroid and destroys the thyroid producing cells. Uh, it is radioactive, so medicate, or you want an adverse effects of this is gonna be radiation sickness. It can also cause bone marrow suppression. Uh, and of course, it can cause hypothyroidism. You wanna increase fluid intake, uh, try to avoid frequently. Uh, don't share toilets with other people. Uh, toilets, don't use the same bathroom, right? You wanna discharge people, there's risk there. Limit contact with others. Uh, same distance, safe distance from people, flush twice, don't share utensils, stay away from pregnant women, all those things, right? The next one is antithyroid strong iodine solution or Lugol solution. I hope you guys are picking up that iodine is bad. It, it stops the secretion of your thyroid, right? So if I'm giving iodine to stop thyroid or treat hyperthyroidism, um, it's gonna suppress that. So uh, with this medication, this can cause GI upset again. Uh, it can cause excessive iodine. This can lead to a metallic taste, but also stomatitis. Uh, so stomatitis is going to be like a redness or like a canker, canker score you can, uh, sore you can get in your mouth. Uh, we talk about this with uh, chemo drugs as well. This can also cause a sore throat and gums um, or lead to a hypersensitivity. Any medication they're going to throw out, you might see pruritus, which is itching, or urtic urticaria, which is going to be your hives or your rash. With this medication, increase your fluid intake, um, mix with juice to improve the taste, and again, avoid foods high in iodine, which include iodized salt, seafood, things like that. 
The next medication we're going to talk about is going to be your vasopressin or patrecin. This is an antidiuretic hormone. This treats diabetes insipidus. So I used to be confused when I was a nursing student, like, oh, it's diabetes, it's glucose. Nope. Diabetes insipidus is just a problem with your antidiuretic hormone. It's not actually secreting enough, okay? So if somebody has antidiuretic or a problem where they don't have enough antidiuretic hormone working, antidiuretic, diuresis means the pee, anti. So antidiuretic hormone makes you stop peeing. If it's not working enough, it's not working good enough, your patient's complaint when they come into the hospital with diabetes insipidus, they're gonna say, I, I pee too much. And we're gonna give them this medication. This is vasopressin or patrecin. This mimics ADH, it causes reabsorption of water in the kidney, and it's gonna decrease your urine output and increase your urine osmolality. Uh, this medication has an adverse effect if it works too good. It makes sense. If you stop peeing, it's gonna cause overhydration. What are signs and symptoms of overhydration? Bounding pulses, headaches. If you fill up fluid too much, it might cause hypertension. Uh, you wanna watch and tell people to reduce their fluid intake during therapy, and their urine output uh, should be around two liters over 24 hours, all right? The next medication is gonna be your adrenal hormone replacement. This is your hydro, uh, hydrocortisone. We talked about this in the respiratory chapter. This is the same thing as your uh, steroids, right? So hydrocortisone is another corticosteroid. Uh, it's for adrenal cortico insufficiency with Addison's disease. So remember, your adrenal gland is on your kidneys. All right, I know I'm talking fast, but stick with me. Adrenal gland in your body is supposed to secrete cortisol. And if it's too low, hyposecretion is going to be Addison's. If it's too high, it's going to be Cushing's. So if this is a medication that's a corticosteroid that I'm giving to somebody else, I'm giving it to them, the steroid, they probably have hyposecretion, and we need to increase that. All right. So it mimics, uh, mimics natural cortisol. Uh, you know, your cortisol maintains blood pressure, metabolism, inflammatory responses. Anytime we give corticosteroids in healthcare, the primary objective for corticosteroids generally is to decrease inflammation, right? Prednisone, take that, decreases inflammation. Solumedrol, which is methylprednisolone, uh, cortisone shots, everything. Decrease inflammation to help with pain or inflammatory responses that could be related to breathing, you know, hives, whatever it's going to be. So adverse effects are going to be the same as the one we talked about in respiratory. You can have bone loss, right? So if you're going to have bone loss, what should you do? You should do a, uh, you know, a bone scan. Uh, it can lead to peptic ulcers. This medication is terrible. Do not take this corticosteroid, hydrocortisone, with what medications that can cause peptic ulcers? NSAIDs. Good job. Uh, this can cause an infection because it does cause immunosuppression. Immunosuppression, what blood, cell, what, what blood test should I be looking at? Your CBC, look at your whites. What's the range of your whites? Five to 10,000. This can cause weight gain. It causes that fluid retention. You might see that moon face. It can cause skin frailty. If it can also cause striae, striae pops up sometimes. Um, and it can also cause adrenal suppression. If you're given medication for cortisol, it can cause adrenal suppression because it's already circulating your body. So monitor for signs and symptoms of bleeds. Anytime you have this medication, any medication like NSAIDs that puts you at risk for ulcers, monitor for signs of bleed, which is gonna be coffee ground emesis, dark tar, uh, tarry stools. These medications cannot be stopped immediately. You need to make sure they're titrated appropriately and you take the full dose so you can avoid that adrenal cortico insufficiency. Monitor for infection for the immunosuppression and make sure you take your uh, calcium and vitamin D supplements with this medication. Uh, and avoid NSAIDs at all costs. That's gonna wrap it up for all the endocrine drugs. Uh, stick with me, like, follow, share, all those things. I'm really happy to do this for all you guys and my students. So uh, thank you for following and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.